maybe we could find out a little bit about the types of visitors that you've dealt with. Do you see them physically, or do you, um, are you ac actually sort of in an altered state? Or are you able to see them in your mind? And do you communicate with them telepathically? Well, they're as physical as you and I. Okay. And yes, it would be telepathic. Mm -hmm. uh, some could talk just like you and I. Okay. But you'll have uh, a lot that uh, they won't do that, and they all just want to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's one thing you have to keep in mind, this is what a lot of people overlook, and that's why it gets to be so hard to talk about. You're not just talking to them. They know, and they feel everything that you know and you feel. You, you go in, you feel what they feel. And see, some of these, we weren't real good guys. We use the term visitor. Sure. But they're treated like prisoners. I understand. And there is no outlaw under protection to protect them. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Burrish has talked about this as well. In 1960, and I can provide you with the document, we have put together and formulated, NASA did, a book that, calls, that they call Outer Space Law. It would be not it would not be until the 1970s that the question of the legal rights of an essentient being, not of this world, even came into play. Mm -hmm. And you know what those rights are? There aren't any. Still, to this day, you're saying? No more than what the rights would... A lab animal would have more rights than one of our visitors, and yet they are vastly superior to us in intellect, mm -hmm. and even in spirituality. They so, would permit themselves to be killed. Many of them would. Many of the species. Other than to do something that would cause us to get injured or killed. Hmm. And forgive me, but you know, this is what I'm trying to avoid. I understand. Well, oh, okay, so they, in a certain sense, would sacrifice themselves because they have a deeper understanding of what's really going on than we do. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so you must be a very um, highly tuned spiritual being yourself in order to be able to communicate with various races from other planets um, the way you have and to talk about it the way you do. And, you know, that's, that's really a gift. As you say, it's, it's not something taught. It's something you come into this incarnation with. Well, I like to think of myself. I want to be normal, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. Um, well, for you know, I, I know what you're saying. You appear like a normal, a normal person, and you've certainly held some very normal types of jobs, um, in addition to what you did, right? Um, but you are also ultra normal, or you know, you you actually have used some of the um, parts of, of humanity that are good parts that are not used by the average man. Is that right? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so that's a beautiful thing, and 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 we're really um, happy to meet someone you know in person who's been doing this. Well, with me, I think the one thing. Let me see if I can say this and get it through real quick. When I was young, I played with children that other people couldn't see. Mm -hmm. To me, this was per perfectly normal. And I knew about the imaginary friends and things of this sort, but this was different. Mm -hmm. And it was perfectly normal. They had even helped me with my homework. And this was perfectly normal. Now, no one else could see these people. And, of course, I couldn't understand that, but, of course, they would tell me. Uh, you know, they haven't been selected. They can't see us. Sure. Because I was trying to tell other people they were there. The one thing I could not do is that in being normal, I thought other people had these same experiences. As a child, not realizing that that wasn't the case. That was part of 
my environment, that was part of my reality. These were things that was happening to me. But I felt everyone had these experiences. But when I found out and it came to me that, you know, people were calling you crazy and you were different, it would have been real easy to be normal and say, ha ha, the joke's on you and deny what was happening. Sure. I cannot explain why I couldn't do that, but I could not do that. Okay. And everything was, you know, going on. Nothing out of the real ordinary happened until I always cared about animals, and if I found one injured, I would always try to nurse it back to help. As a child, I did not understand that if you had a cut, my mom would always hold my hand under the water or something like that to wash it off. Well, I found this little bird. It fell out of the nest. And I went and got that little... I'm trying to tell this without... I went and got that little bird and I held it under the faucet, not realizing that I was going to drown it doing that. The intent was to help it. I probably cried for over a week over killing that little bird. Mm -hmm. Immediately, for the first time ever, the ch what I was calling children, I got to see how they really looked. And this one particular en entity was, I always knew as Corona. I was told, I'm Corona, and that's with a K. Okay. Back at the time, I didn't even know how to spell Corona. And what kind of race, what what, um, what would you term him, what kind of Well, people would love for me to say that he was gray, but he wasn't, he was green. Okay. I mean, like a pastel green. Uh-huh. Uh, but immediately, he wanted to know, why did I feel what I was feeling? Okay. This was unusual. Mm -hmm. And immediately it was, why did I feel what I was feeling, but he could feel? Mm -hmm. Because he was more like a monitor with me. And so he's, he has a natural em empathic quality and abilities, and it appears so did you. So it went both ways, as the telepathy goes both ways. I'll carry it even a step further. We see that our visitors as cartoon characters. They have cultures, they have societies, they have families, they have loves, they have dislikes, they have likes. Mm -hmm. uh, they can feel pain and they can feel fear. Mm -hmm. So this, this was maybe your first um, you know, introduction into that world um, in a more personal way, right? It was the first glimpse, a shock, that these things go on, but not everyone shares in them. Mm -hmm. And so you never felt as long, so alone. I can remember breaking down and crying, begging my mom and dad to take me to see a doctor, because I knew the doctor could make the monsters go away. Mm -hmm. 